How do you analyze an investment property? That's a great question, and by the end of this video, I want you to be able to calculate net operating income, NOI, cap rate, and cash on cash return, and I'm gonna show you some of the super secret numbers that I love to look at. Hi, I'm Paul Haley, Toronto Realtor, investor, educator and speaker, and I wanna help you learn how to invest in real estate. Okay, a little disclaimer, <laughs> or uh, a confession. I love numbers. I'm an engineer, a uh, math person by original training. <laughs> so I, I love spreadsheets and I love numbers. And honestly, if the numbers don't work for me, uh, if they don't work for an investment property, I don't do it, okay? So that's how strongly I feel about the numbers. This is where it can really make or break any investment and I want to show you how to calculate the numbers and also the numbers that you know I particular look at. Okay so what is net operating income NOI? Net operating income really just measures uh, how a property can generate cash flow. So it's the cash flow from the property minus the expenses. That's what it is and it doesn't have anything to do with the financing expenses, we'll cover that in some later numbers. This one strictly looks at how does the property generate income. Okay, so let's look at a, an actual example which will carry through to all the other ones. Let's say you bought an investment property, a million dollar investment property, you put 20% down, you did some light rehab, some light renos, so total cash out, so deposit, plus land transfer, plus legal fees, plus light rehab, you're out of pocket $250,000, okay? So now let's say this property is a triplex and you get a little bit of income also from the laundry and also from parking. So you have three units and the rents from all three units plus parking plus laundry adds up to $66,500 per month. For costs, it's uh, property tax, hydro, power, uh, insurance, gas, you know, heating costs, gas costs in this case, uh, water and, um, you know, normally there's a waste, garbage cost, and then maintenance. Now, oftentimes people will <laughs> forget to put maintenance, especially when you're buying a property. Uh, and, you know, it is hard to estimate. You can look at past expenditures or you can look at the state of the property and, and kind of guesstimate what you think you would have to put into that property for maintenance over the years. In this case, I used 500 bucks. You know, it's usually between $300 and $500 a month. And, you know, you don't spend that every month. You just kind of let that build. And then when something big-ish comes along, you can pay for it. The other thing uh, folks often miss is the insurance number. Sometimes, usually, <laughs> it's too low. Uh, if you're uh, renting for a rental property, the insurance uh, is normally higher per month. And if you're doing short-term rentals, it's really high, like, four or five thousand dollars a year and you'll see in the financials that they don't have that so you know that there's a big risk there okay so to calculate NOI you take the rents six thousand six hundred and fifty dollars times it by twelve because you want a yearly number minus uh, the nineteen thousand one hundred dollars for uh, all the costs and that leaves you with sixty thousand seven hundred dollars that is your net operating income so this leads us to our next number ratio <laughs> which we which is called cap rate so cap rate what it attempts to measure is the property's ability to generate income versus its price so it's basically how you calculate cap rate is uh, your NOI divided by your price your net operating income divided by the price so in this case uh, we calculate the cap rate at 6.1 percent which is actually a very good cap rate uh, in Toronto right now you can expect you know ideally 5% it's usually 4% or less now if I have to be honest I don't really look at cap rate that much uh, a lot of people talk about it it's kind of interesting to me uh, I you know it's one of the things I look at uh, but it's not the primary thing I look at if that makes sense so the interesting thing about cap rate is you can use it to calculate what the property value should be based on net operating income. So you basically just take, uh, you divide the net operating income by the cap rate and that gives you what the property value should be. You have to be careful with this number 
Uh, <laughs> a lot of, you know, a lot of new investors get a little carried away with cap rate. Uh, and, you know, they think uh, property values should only be based on cap rate. The problem is if it's less than six units, cap rates are good. You know, basically investors buy on cap rate for properties with more than six units, less than six units. Now, you know, you're, generally you're talking about a house. And the problem is now, because now you're comparing investment property versus a potential single family home. Uh, and often single family home will actually drive a higher price for the property because it is an emotional decision, not a financial decision. So uh, for, you know, properties, let's say, you know, five units and less, use it more as a guideline <laughs> as opposed to a hard and fast rule. So just as a quick example, let's say at a property that was generating $50,000 in income, and let's just assume a cap rate of 4%, which is, you know, generally what they're trading for now. So that means, Type it away, 50,000 divided by 0 0.04. So that gives you a property value of 1.25 million. Now again, this is just a ballpark. It's just something for you to consider. The important thing, I guess, of this is to realize that as a, a property investment, you wanna maximize the rent, right? You wanna maximize your net operating income because that also translates into price. So when you go to get a mortgage or sell the property, uh, you want that price to be high. What is cash on cash? So cash and cash return attempts to measure the return with financing costs over the purchase, or, sorry, over the amount invested in the property. So this is where we start to get into financing costs, right? Um, and you know, cash on cash is a term really strictly used in real estate investing. Uh, if you're uh, uh, an equity investor, they would call it ROI, return on investment. So how you calculate it? So you calculate it as cash flow uh, minus financing costs, usually over the first year, uh, divided by the, the investment. So the cash you outlaid, in this case, $250,000 for the property. So in this case, at a 3% interest rate, uh, the cash on cash return is 14.8%. That's really interesting. And why I like this number is, you know, really there's three ways you make money uh, on this type of investment property is cash flow, paying down the mortgage, and um, market appreciation. Now, in this case, it's a measure of the first two, which I think is a really good measurement, and it's one of the numbers I look at. Now, just an important mathematical point, because <laughs> I am a self-proclaimed math nerd. Um, the interest, the cost of interest will actually go down a little bit every year as you're paying off the interest. You can look at this table, which shows you how interest comes down over the years and principal payments go up on the monthly payments. So every year you'd be paying a little bit less and less interest. So usually you just do the calculations on the first year alone, or you can do just a simple 3% times your mortgage. So now let's get to the other numbers that I look at. Okay. So the first very important number I look at is just simply cash flow. How much money is this property generating per month? Sometimes I look at it with maintenance. Sometimes I look at it without, um, you know, just because I want a rough idea. So this property with uh, maintenance costs included $500 a month, it's cash flowing $16.86 a month. So that's, to me, that's amazing. That's, you know, there's a lot of buffer there. If I run into any problems, I'm going to be building up cash flow over time. So what I like to look at is not only the cash flow, but also the return on cash flow. So, you know, that income for the first year divided by the uh, equity that I put into this project, the $250,000 in this case gives 8.1%. And that's a really, that's actually still a really good return. If you could get 8.1% in the stock market, you would do it all day long. And there's still two other ways you're making money on this property. And I also like to look at something which I call total ROI. So that now this includes the cash flow, the cash return, the market, or sorry, the down payment of the mortgage and the market appreciation. So it includes all those three things. Now market appreciation is kind of a guesstimate. You're just guessing at what the number is. Um, but I like just to like to know what it is because you know that's where the real juice is in this thing. So in this case, let's use the 30 year average for Canadian real estate, 5.5%. If I got 5.5% market appreciation on this property, 
I would have built up an extra $300,000 in market appreciation over five years. Now, if I add that market appreciation plus the principal pay down, plus the cash flow, just in simple terms, not discounted or anything, divided by initial investment, I get a return of 40%. Now that's what I'm talking about, right? 40%. Those are compelling numbers. That makes me want to invest in a property. And if you use 10%, which, you know, Toronto real estate has been over the last years, you know, current pandemic aside, um, then the return is more like 64%. And, you know, when I'm looking at a property, oftentimes I look at doing developments as well, adding uh, value with development. And so that can add even more and the returns can be 80 to 100%, okay? Now the market appreciation is unknown. You don't know you're gonna get it. You only know in hindsight, but I just like to crunch the number. So I know, you know, in my head, okay, worst case I could maybe get uh, cash flow mortgage pay down best case I get appreciation and the numbers look great so I hope you I hope that was actually really exciting for you uh, I love doing this video because uh, I am a self-proclaimed math nerd <laughs> I do like the numbers and like I said if the numbers don't work I don't even look at a property I don't care I don't want to know uh, I only buy a property where the numbers are solid so you'll want to get very comfortable with this some people don't love numbers that's why I uh, included a spreadsheet download that you can download. Uh, you can just input your assumptions, price, interest rates, all that kind of stuff. And it'll tell you what those numbers are. And it'll tell you, you know, if it's good or not. I hope you found that hugely helpful. Uh, please like this video. And please leave a comment below. That's me typing with my little fingers. <laughs> and please subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. So you'll get notified when there's new videos like this one. And if you have any questions, if you want to talk about returns, all that kind of stuff, uh, please shoot me an email, paul at paulhaley.ca. I would love to help uh, and would love to talk about my favorite subject, real estate. Talk soon. There's a pole in my head. There's a pole in my head. <laughs> 19,100. And you get, I forgot the number. <laughs> Stand here so you can put some numbers there because over here it's like boom in the light. I saw the light. <laughs> so help a little blue blue. <laughs> so net operating income. Sorry. Kind of hoping that would be a fast train. <laughs>